Lake Pickwick on the Tennessee River. It is early June, perfect ledge fishing tournament. So let's go. Outside of, you know, maybe bed fishing tournaments or, or shad spawn tournaments when that early, early bite is key, you want a low boat number when you're fishing ledge fishing tournaments because you really get to kind of like, you know, whiz on the bushes around there and you get to kind of stake your claim. If you can get to that spot first, even though somebody else might roll in there, it still was yours first. So I was in the first flight on the first day. I got boat 14. So I'm thinking, okay, okay, this is going to be good. Uh, I've got, I've only got a couple places I feel strongly about. Uh, I didn't have the greatest practice, but if you can get on one of those good spots, kind of claim it and, and then, and then beat on it a little bit and see what happens. It, it can happen good. All right, here we go. Pickwick right here. First morning. Let's get ready to ride boys and girls. So boat 14, I take off, I run about 10 or 12 miles up the lake, uh, fast as I can go, and, and when I'm running up there, I can only see one boat in front of me. And sure enough, Austin Felix is on the exact same spot that I'm fishing. So we ended up, ended up sharing it, uh, but I did, Catch my first keeper there. He ate it at it. He just latched onto it. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh oh. You know, after, after that start, you know, it was not exactly the start I wanted. I was trying to bang out a couple on that first spot. So I thought maybe I'll go to the next spot. And, and that spot was loaded too. Went to that spot and there was two boats already on it. Now, if one boat's there, you can kind of slide in usually with two boats, not gonna happen. So I had to kind of keep running a couple more spots. Then I finally got onto another area and was able to boat a few more keepers. That's a bass. Look how he ate it. He had it down about a tail. Mm -hmm. Good job, dude. Nice. Hey. Man, these suckers are hard to get to bite. Uh -huh. He's kind of up near the surface there. Thank you. That's it. Go 
I'm good. Go on, one eight. One eight. After that, I, yeah, I had had four. Was thinking, all right, here we go. Got four. Got the rest of the day to, to bang out five and call some. Well, I hit a little dry spell and didn't catch any for a bit until we we kind of finally got back into them. Uh, and I caught three or four more keepers, but they were all two pounders. Nothing that really put any kind of weight on the board for us. Check us in. We did catch five and we did call a few times, which is good, but it's uh, a little disappointing on the size. We'll see what, see where we come in. Uh, a little bit of a struggle. I think we might give us a chance for tomorrow. I don't, don't really know. So uh, we'll put them on the scales and we'll let you know. Ended up in, um, you know, it, it well out of the cut. It's looking, looking like it was going to be about 14 pounds a day to make the cut. So I was, you know, Within striking distance, I needed probably 16 and a half pounds. Uh, 16, 16 and a half pounds was my calculation on, on day two. Uh, very reasonable bag on, on Pickwick Lake. It's a good lake, a lot of good fish in it. I thought, okay, let, let's do it. So uh, day two, I thought I was just gonna change up the order of some of the places that, that I fished and uh, maybe add in a few more new ones. And, and hopefully we could, uh, we could land on a place that was going to produce. All right, we had us 11.7 yesterday, put us in 74th place. Not good, right at 14 pounds is in the, the day three cut for now. So uh, we got to we got to step it up a little bit. Uh, to six, you know, 17 pounds will do it. 16 and a half might do it. So that's what our that's what our goal weight minimum is. Josh Strasner about blew us out right there, just about. So we gotta get there and get 17 pounds or more. Let's see if we can make it happen. Yes, sir.
certainly aren't messing around with it. They're crushing it. <laughs> Man, those those bites on top water were some of the most exciting, big blow ups that I've had on, on a topwater plug in quite a while. I mean, you know, I caught some good fish on, on a plopper at, at Fork, but man, they were really just kind of slurping it off the top. I mean, that small mouth and that, that large mouth were trying to kill that topwater bait. That was a new Spro uh, prototype walk-in bait uh, coming out with sometime, uh, I believe in the next year or so. Uh, man, that thing, it walks great. It has a nice loud rattle in it. And uh, man, it was it was the, the order of the day. So I, I kept running that until it just got too sunny. I lost uh, some of my shade lines and uh, the bite seemed to be just kind of dying off. I thought, okay, I got too early. I've got the rest of the day to catch three decent fish. And uh, you know, just started, started bouncing around ledges after that. And it was strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. Look at this can. Oh, yes. man. Nice one. It's Coke. There you go. <laughs> but, uh... Go, 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 go. Yes, sir. Heave them on in here. Heave them on in here. Baby destroyer. Yes, yeah. sir. Baby destroyer came through. We only got three fish today, so that's uh, it's going to be bad. Yeah, you know, I mean fishing, fishing that hard. Um, you and not having the results and then going to weigh in and seeing all the fish weighed in it it is really frustrating because you know that you just weren't in on the right spots you just did i did at my timing was off you know i fished one of the spots in the afternoon uh, or in the middle of the day with with clint davis i talked to him the next day he said he went back there before weigh in to that same spot we fished and was catching them every cast um so that, you know our my timing was off and, and I didn't go back. I thought about going back to that, that one ledge and, and, and seeing if they were fired up. And sure enough, he went back and they were fired up. Uh, I, you know, a bunch of the places I fished, I thought were gonna be good. Uh, maybe I should have re-hit some of the places I hit in the morning to see if they were turned on in the afternoon. Um, you know, it's, it's just tough. It's tough. We you know I, I only had three keepers a second day, uh, ended up in uh, 81st place. So I went into this tournament with probably a 50% chance to make the classic. This was definitely, Pickwick was definitely a make or break tournament for me. I needed to, I needed to put a decent finish on the board, get some good points towards AOY, and then, you know, continue to, to jump on my percentages to make the classic. But now I've dug myself an even deeper hole and I'm probably in the, I would guess, 10% uh, likelihood to make the classic where I'm at now in AOI. I'm outside of it. I still absolutely 100% have a chance, uh, but I've, I've got an average basically 20th place in the last three tournaments. Very, it's doable, but like I said, probably a 20, 10% chance or so that, that I can do it. Uh, so it's one, one event at a time. Uh, Pickwick really, really, really kind of stung. I like ledge fishing. I really wish I could have it to do over again. I don't think I was way off in my practice strategy, way off in my, my tournament strategy. Uh, I just had, I didn't have very good timing. I didn't quite, quite dial in the right places. And uh, it's one of those tournaments I really wish I could go back and do over again, but, but you can't. You, you, you know, history is this way, uh, your future is that way. And, and that's where I need to keep my eyes focused. I'm focused on going to New York here in about a month and um, putting a really good finish on the board. My goal is for a top 10. I've never had a top 10 at New York. So, um, you know, after, after what went on at Pickwick, 
long practice days, fished my butt off as hard as I could and, and had a terrible finish. I'm going to be ready to, to, to just simplify it a little bit and uh, go after those New York fish. So that's, that's where my focus is now.